You ever hear the story when I was on the uh, TV show Buddies with Dave Chappelle? Uh, I don't think so. This is this is so. I just get married, and for those of you that don't know, go back a couple episodes with Sean Pomeroy was on. Uh, Mike, what what was the name of that episode? Uh, I think it was just. Let me, hold on, I can look it up here real quick. Because when you listen to that episode, you'll get a deeper sense of how. A, I met my wife, and B, the deeper level of how we came together and met and start our journey in life together. It was episode 21. Episode 21. Does it, yep. does, does it have a specific name? It like just it, says uh, Jim's childhood friend, Sean Pomeroy. Perfect. If you like this story, go back and listen to that story as well. So, now these things happen to me all the time. And that's what I'm telling you. You know, I was talking to someone else about religion and, and all this stuff. And it's, I'm a true believer in, you got the main source. You can do, you can stop whenever you want and talk to the source, the, the power energy, the God, the, the energies, the flow, the God, uh, spirituality, whatever, however you want to define it, if you define it, the the the, the not no whatever, karma, what, however your head would like to wrap around it. I always thought to religion was created to deter you from using your own power from within, because the minute you discover your power. your power from within, the minute you discover that, you don't need all the rest. You don't need to be running to the guy wearing the big hat and the cloth and the, 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 ringing the bells and the, the scents and the candles and saying, I need $50 million. We need to buy more land and build more wings and we need to, to build uh, we need another $40,000 because we're going to take a trip to uh, some country that you've never been to, uh, even though the lady up the street needs groceries. We're not going to talk about that. And, uh, you know, somebody's homeless shelter. We're not going to talk about that. You know. Uh, so with that said, I'm now in the house. I, I, uh, I get offered to do this TV show. I had a development deal for the network NBC. And... Uh, Dave Chappelle had a deal with HBO and I was super excited for him and his deal from what I remember, because we had the same uh, people at the time, he had two one hour comedy specials and a, a talk show, like a variety talk show. I, was developing something at the network NBC with the creators, this guy named Jeff Pollock, of French Prince of Bel-Air, the Will Smith big hit. And I go to his house, and I'm like, oh, God, the big house, and he's a really cool guy. The guy that uh, managed me and Chappelle clearly went to, he went to Disney, Touchstone Television. Um, and I remember Henry Kissinger's kid was one of the head programmers at Disney. That that was fascinating. Henry Kissinger's child was a programmer for Disney Television. That that was fascinating. Anyway, um, with that said. Disney decides to take me and Dave Chappelle, take him out of the deals that we're looking at. Dave, I believe his deal is already done. Mine's about to finish. And 
together we're guaranteed to be on television on ABC. And we're going to follow the biggest television show in history after like Cosby at the time. It was called Home Improvement. And some of you always love sending me the episode that you find. Uh, you're like, is this you? You look like you're 11. It's me and Dave. We look like we're 12 years old. It was really goofy and funny. They had us go to, to promote it. They had us go to Disney World and be in the Easter Parade and all that shit. So get the sh we, we're, we're going to film three episodes of Home Improvement so they get to know us. And then we're going to spin off and have our own show called Buddies. So I'm pretty hopped up guaranteed dave's a little weary and i told dave i told him i said i wouldn't do this if i was you he said man what are you thinking I, went, I don't know if i was you i don't know if i would do that hbo at that time was the cream of the crop to get on that was as a comedian you don't get any bigger than hbo back in the eight seventies. well i don't know if it started 80s 80s 90s that's what you want Long story short, we both eventually go for it. Dave, if I remember, got banned from HBO at the time. And they replaced him basically with Chris Rock. And that's how Chris Rock blew up. Chris Rock blew up because of his talent. But that situation of being pulled from HBO allowed Chris Rock to be hired. And then he had the specials and his show. That was Dave Chappelle's gig. So, and again, nothing to take away from Chris. That's like, hey, man, you, we need a batter. Oh, shit. That ball went out of the park. So he, he took hold of his flame and he went with it. And rightfully so. Brilliant. All that jazz. Dave and I... <laughs> We're on the set of Home Improvement, and they, the, the two of us, first of all, here's some things you don't know that are fucking hilarious. Number one, when you're young, first of all, we're super young, and uh, they 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 give you, like, what kind of car you need? Like, what? I said, can I have a Mustang convertible? Ta-da! Mustang convertible. I'm, I'm like 20. Five years old, just got married. You've given me a Mustang convertible. As long as filming the show and the show is going, I have a Mustang convertible. Thank you, Disney. Dave, they give him, uh, he don't drive. He's he's a kid from D.C. Now he lives in New York City. He's never drove. They give him a car. Okay, so he gets this car. He hates it. He hates this car. He, he thinks... It's, it's just the worst car ever. So <laughs> he gets, he, he wants another car. So they give him another car. They give him this other car and he shows up at the hotel that they have a staying in. We have to take acting lessons with Helen Hunt's dad. And uh, he, he thinks it's, he, he thinks it's racist because it looks like a pimp mobile. He said, man, they only gave me this because I'm black, man. Man, look at Jim. Tell me this ain't true. How come you got a Mustang compared? Look at this thing. Look, who drives a Lincoln? Who drives? Man, they gave the black guy a Lincoln. Um, when Dave back then would get riled up, I, I couldn't breathe. I'd be laughing so hard because he, in general, re he really means it and really feels it. And for all you know, it was, it was a little weird, a little weird. The black guy gets a, a Lincoln. So, so he, he wanted to get rid of this car. No problem. He gets another car. Okay? Gets another car. Calls me up. When he calls me up, he goes, uh, Hey, Jim, man, I got a new car. I love this car. Now I understand what it's like to go cru come cruising with me. I said, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not cruising with you, man. He goes, all right, you drive your car, I'll drive my car. I said, that's fine. I'll blast my Metallica. You listen to whatever he liked, whatever rap he was listening to. 
So we're driving over the hills, over the canyons of Hollywood and Laurel Canyon and thinking we're on top of the world. And uh, we get to this coffee shop on off Melrose Place and uh, we park. I leave the top of my car down. Who gives a shit? It's, it's, they take it. It's Disney's problem. Dave locks it. He's got the bloop, bloop, bloop. And he, uh, we, I think we caught a buzz. I think we had stone when we went in the coffee shop. And we're sitting there for, seemed like an hour or two. And we're solving all the world's problems. And Dave goes, man, I think my car just went by. I think my car just went. I said, no, no. Dave, everyone drives a Toyota, whatever it was. It was some Toyota or some. No, man, it looked just like my car. It's not your car. It's not your car. We wait there a while. We, I come back out. There's my car, top down. His car is gone. They stole his car. Dave's hilarious. He's standing there all depressed in the, in the smoke. He's like, man, maybe they towed it. I went, no, they didn't tow it. They stole your shit. They stole your car. I went, you called it. They really took it. Hey, he's sitting there and he goes, man, that's some foul shit. Man, it's some. He goes, there's some brother right now just with a full tank of gas blasting my Mary J. Blige. God damn it. And I'm fuck, I'm howling, howling with laughter. It's like my leather jacket is in the trees. Foul. That shit is foul. So we take walk to the police department and we make a police report i'm fucking howling laughter we gotta call the car place again so now he's on his fourth car dave gets a car what do i do the next day i smash my car up but i don't tell disney and i'm fucking telling them they hate us so um now now we're like rehearsing and Dave locks his keys in the car. He can't get the fucking car. So the car thing is already a disaster with us. It's a disaster. Both cars. But now we do, we're do. we doing home improvement and uh, we're supposed to do three episodes. Now we're doing one episode. And now we're doing our show, which is called Buddies. This is before Saturday Night Live. And we're on the cover of TV Guide. So everywhere you go, you see the cover of TV Guy and you see us premiering. You've seen our commercials. We already filmed one episode. We filmed one episode. And we're already filming the next one. And we sat down to uh, read. And as we're, as we're reading the next episode, everyone's talking about, like, hey, what are you doing for the premiere? Um, when the premiere, I said, I flew my two friends out, Phil and Gene. They're in the hotel now. They're trashing my mini bar, white trashing the place out. We They got a limo for later today. They're going to go out. It's all my damn. Um, and they go, you know what? As soon as we finish read through, you're supposed to go and start rehearsing. And they go, you know what? We're going to cut. We're going to do heavy rewrites today. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to we, 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 Jim. Uh, we're going to forget today. Come back tomorrow, 10 o'clock. That's your call time. Dave Spell, your call time. Similar. Now, up until that moment, my manager was telling me that they were having problems with Dave and they didn't think if Dave was the guy. That's what he was telling me. I said, why is that? Well, because you know, he's late and he's fucking whatever, whatever. Like, well, that's fucked up. And so I'm not going to lie to you. When you're in that world, now I got an assistant. I had an assistant. You're instantly somebody. And what I mean by that is just the fact that I was the new guy, television's on the way. This is going to be a big time, blah, blah, blah. The amount of women that come out of the woodwork and the way I, 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 it's like this. Pretend you're in school, right? You're like, ah, hey, you're a nerdy guy or you're a, or a female that doesn't get it. Now you're in college, whole different identity, and you're going, I never knew I can get levels 
all the opposite sex like this. Like, holy shit, do you see the people that are checking me out? This is a whole new same thing when you're on the meat market. Now, I'm just married. I'm just married to the love of my life. I mean, I, it was a whole godly thing, all this jazz. And I'm in Hollywood, and I'm starting to feel, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm scared to death for our marriage. And th th that world, too, kind of makes you feel like, hey, man, it's all right to play with the devil. That's what they do out here. They have girlfriends. You hang out with the Hollywoods. And, and then you still have your, your, your home. And I started thinking like that. Started, it makes you think like that real quick. I was young. And there's the money coming. I'm driving a convertible. And it was pretty intense. Now, I'm at the hotel. And... My friends are there. They're ready, you know, they're, they're they're drinking. We're going in a limo later. They're all said, "Dude, we saw your commercials twice today." Me and Dave are getting recognized in the mall. It was it was it was pretty amazing. It was pretty amazing. I'm gonna be making seventy five thousand dollars a week per episode. Um, so I get a call from a manager. Hey man, come in, come down to my hotel room. I right, talked to you about something. I said, "What's up?" I said, "Gonna bring my friends because we're on the way out because I got the day off now." Because now, nah, man, why don't you come down along? So I go down there, and he goes, uh, "Now before this happens, before this conversation, I was so scared for my marriage, on my life, on my life." I prayed so hard. I said, God, you got to save my marriage. I'm not going to last. I don't, I feel weak. I don't want to hurt her. I don't want to hurt us, but it's going to happen. I already see it. I already see it. Please, I'm begging you. I did. I remember saying, I'm begging you. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you have to. Please, I'm begging you. My mom's calling. Well, we got the whole Elks Club and all the Red Hot Lay. We can't wait to watch. We're all set. We're going to have a big party at the house where everyone's going to be watching. It's going to be amazing. I'm praying to God, please, what are you, how are you going to save my marriage? And I was also pissed because my wife wasn't good. My wife had a backup job as a nanny. And I'm calling her up. I'm like, D, what the fuck? Fuck that nanny job. We're, we're it. Mr. Hollywood, baby. I made it. She's like, you don't know yet? I'm like, oh, fucking, oh, my God, I hate that attitude. So, second episode, first show's airing, blah, 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 done praying. Manager calls. Hey, man, come to my room. Can I bring my friends? Nah, come along. Come down there. What's up? He goes, uh, they let you go. So what do you mean? Who let, let you, what are you talking about? He goes, you and the show, it's, uh, it's not going to happen. I go, what are you talking about? The show ain't happening? He goes, no, no, no. The, the show's going to happen. They, they just let you go. What the fuck are you doing? What are you, what are you talking about? He goes, no, I, I, there's no excuse. There's no, they don't like you as an actor. They don't like, uh, they just, they're, uh, they're going to replace you. And I know this sounds crazy, but I'm dead serious. When I tell you the first thing I thought about was, wow. That's not how I imagined my marriage being saved, but that's honestly what I thought about. Wow. That's how it's going to go down? I can't do the show. That's how we're going to save the marriage? Wow. Wow. Now, 
So then, and then I asked, I was really, I felt horrible for Dave because he just got taken out of a huge deal. Chris Rock takes his place. He's blowing up. And now here's the show. It's just smithereens. We're both. So I don't know how to feel. You know, the toughest call, the toughest calls is like your parents. Like, hey, man, this ain't going down. Well, why not? I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I, I have a party here on Tuesday and just uh, we're having cocktails and your father has the entire Elks Club and he's been telling everyone they have people flying in from other states to watch this. Like, I don't know, mom. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it was one of the most freeing, liberating things I've ever been through in my life. And I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I, I, I believe that stuff, man. I was begging God save this marriage. The last thing I thought was, well, then you're fired. I mean, it just, it, it came from left field. And while I was fired, the commercials were still on. I'm still on the cover of TV Guide. But I'll never forget the most. And I also saw just how soulless and callous you're just a product you're just you're just a pair of here you're just a pair of sunglasses that's all it is like yeah um yeah i don't like these put them over here but you think because you're human and you think because you have a soul and conscious that you're something bigger and whatever organization you work and whatever company you are you're like oh, i gave him my heart and soul 99.9% of the time in this world it doesn't mean shit doesn't mean shit Humanity doesn't mean shit. You're just a product. You're just a product. And you know what really helped me feel that way is I remember one of my co-stars called me. And uh, she was like, Jim, oh my God, what? This is the most horrible thing. Like, I don't, why did they, why did they get rid of you? I said, I don't know. It makes no sense. There was no, there was no rumors. There was no, I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Now, I did hear one thing. Uh, my manager said they were thinking about replacing you with a name, something that could sell. And he goes, the rumor is they want to get Brendan Fraser, Brandon Fraser, Brendan Fraser. So I, I remember this girl talking to me, one of the co-stars, and she's like, Jim, you haven't heard nothing? I went, well, there's this, I did hear they may replace me. And she said, with who? I said, Brendan Fraser. And she didn't hesitate. She went, oh, my God, that would be amazing. Are you serious right now? If I had the opportunity, oh, my God, I hope I get the kiss. I'm like, wow. 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 Holy crap. That's how disposable you are. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. It was the best thing that happened to me in my whole life. It 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 just jolted my morals, my life, everything. It was the beginning of another whole canon, like going from that to SNL and all that jazz. But I'm telling you, in any industry you're in, if you aren't grounded with life, morality, spirituality, God, faith. You're going to have a tough go at it, man. You're going to have a tough go at it. It's not easy. doesn't matter how much money you make. doesn't matter how much you go up. But I thank God for that moment over and over in so many moments. I know that sounds crazy, but that's my funny how God works. I asked to save our marriage, and he fired me from a sitcom. <laughs> go figure. <laughs>